Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're looking at a few more heresies and heretical views denounced by the church, and this time, docetism. The truth of the matter is, we really don't know a whole lot about who came up with the idea of docetism, where it came from, or what kinds of thinking inspired it. We do know it came into existence before the year 200, because some documents from around that time refer to docetists under the title Doketai, which means illusionists. Now, why would early Christians call them illusionists? Well, it's not because they practiced magic tricks, it's because of what they believed about Jesus. You see, docetists were like the opposite of what Arians would later be. Arians denied that Jesus was God, remember. What docetists denied was that Jesus was human. In their view, the human body of Jesus, which was conceived in Mary, which she carried and gave birth to in a manger, who was raised by Mary and Joseph, who worked as a carpenter, had a three-ish year ministry, and was crucified by the Romans after the Sanhedrin framed him for blasphemy and subversion, that body of Jesus was, according to them, not even real. It was just an illusion. This idea of Jesus being just some kind of psychic image rather than an actual person when people literally saw him eat, drink, and bleed is pretty silly on the face of it, and it just becomes sillier the more you think about it. For instance, are we going to say that Mary gave birth to an illusion? That an illusion was nailed to a cross? That an illusion ate food with the disciples? And better yet, that an illusion multiplied loaves and fish? That was a filling meal for an illusion. Now, what they might have been saying is that Jesus was spiritually there, but just the experience of interacting with him with the senses, touching him, hearing him, seeing him, were false impressions projected into people's minds by God. Well, first off, this opens you up to the same problems as a full-blown skepticism does. Once you start dismissing evidence in order to avoid a conclusion, where do you stop? Do you stop? If not, how can you ever trust any information again? However, it's worse than that for two reasons. First, because the Bible says in a number of places that Jesus has flesh. For instance, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, the glory, as it were, of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1, 14. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath everlasting life and I will raise him up on the last day. John 6, 55. How are you supposed to eat and drink an illusion? Now, the docetists responded to this by saying that these passages meant psychic flesh. These two words mean opposite things. It's like calling Jesus a round square or a married bachelor. But going back, how are you supposed to eat and drink a psychic anything? Now, a bigger problem with docetism, and the one that went unanswered by its defenders, is this verse here. And whilst they were at supper, Jesus took bread, and blessed, and broke, and gave to his disciples, and said, Take ye, and eat. This is my body. Matthew twenty six twenty six. So, does Jesus have a body, or doesn't he? If his body is an illusion, he doesn't have a body, and if he doesn't have a body, then this verse here is a lie. If Jesus can lie, he's imperfect, and therefore not God. Therefore, docetism can't be true, because docetists believe Jesus is God. However, if Jesus can't lie, then he has a body. Therefore, docetism is false for another reason. This verse crushes the whole docetist belief system badly. Fortunately, docetism ended up getting flatly rejected at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD when people realized how ridiculous it was, so this heresy has been basically dead and buried for over a thousand years. Next time, what was Audianism? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.